How to buy a used Tesla? It is very different from buying a regular car and I will tell you why. I know a lot of people are uh, kind of tired of waiting uh, uh, in line to get the Model 3 because you don't know if you're gonna get it in two years, three years, and four years. And the price of the used Tesla Model S cars is kind of uh, falling to a point where it is pretty much the same as what you're going to pay for a brand new Model 3. So there are a lot of people in the market right now trying to uh, shop for uh, a used Tesla. Um, and there are quite a few things that you need to know about it because they are very different cars from uh, your regular gas car. Though a lot of things are the same as well. Now, I, this video is not about uh, anything that has to do with finances. You know, I'm, assume, I'm assuming that all of you guys are big boys and girls and you understand your own finances and already picked out the uh, uh, a bank uh, and a plan and an and a interest rate that you wanna go with and you understand that what your budget is and all that stuff. I'm just gonna leave it up to you. That's, that's just finances one-on-one. So I'm gonna kind of, uh, you know, glide right over that. And let's get into top five things that I believe you should be looking uh, out for when, when shopping for a used Tesla because they are kind of unique specifically for Tesla. Number one, understand what the fair price of the car is. Now, I know it sounds just like with any other car. However, with Tesla, it's much more difficult because there is not enough history for uh, these cars out there. Um, you don't know if these cars are gonna crap out after 100,000 miles or 500,000 miles simply because there are not too many cars, if any, that kind of cross those uh, milestones. Now, you can still do your best to understand what the fair price is right now. And uh, for that, you should look in two different places. One, uh, obviously check uh, on the inventory of the pre-owned certified Tesla cars that Tesla has in their inventory. Um, they will give you a good idea of what this sort of a top number is for the car you're looking for. These cars usually come with maybe any, uh, some additional warranties. Uh, they usually been checked by mechanics um, that, uh, that work for Tesla and they're you know kind of a safe bet. Um, but of course you're gonna pay more money for that. On the other side, you want to check with websites like Craigslist where you know private parties sell Teslas. Those prices are not necessarily the prices that they're gonna sell for, but they will still give you a better idea of what sort of the bottom numbers that are out there are. So after all of that, and I'm sure you'll probably be, you know, talking to some people here and there, some dealers and, and see, you know, whether you get some pushback on some numbers and, and you will probably mold the numbers into something that you, you understand about the specific car that you're looking for. Um, so that's number one. And by the way, your, your best bet, if you ask me, is to go to uh, your um, Tesla dealer, I don't wanna call them dealer, to a showroom, uh, and ask them for demo, or they call it inventory cars. These are cars that they've used to demo when you come to their showroom and, and take a test drive. So those can actually go for really large discounts. And a lot of times they uh, will probably incorporate, uh, oh, by the way, so, so they will incorporate the uh, all the tax incentives and rebates into it because you can also lease that car because they will still sell them as new cars depending on the state, depending on the mileage. But those, most of those cars will be considered new and you can lease them and get financing just like for any other brand new cars. But discounts can go up to $20,000, dollars $25,000 on those cars. So check those out for sure. Number two, features. Now, Tesla has some features that are very different uh, from regular gas cars. One of them is definitely a battery. This is very important because the size of the battery and whether or not it's a dual a motor car uh, will dictate how far you'll be able to go on one charge. So this is kind of up to you. You need to understand what that, what that uh, range is um, that makes it comfortable for you. You don't wanna get any kind of what's called range anxiety. If you travel a long distance uh, or you work far away, you, you might wanna uh, calculate that into your decision. You might wanna go with a larger battery. But if you, if you, if you kind of keep yourself to a, a smaller area, then a smaller battery might, might just do for you. So please research that, understand what your needs are because that is a big deal, the battery. There are other things that are very different in, in Tesla from other cars. For example, autopilot. Figure it out. Do you need an autopilot? 
I know it's been in the news a lot and it's a cool thing to do, but a lot of people don't really care for it because they just love driving their cars on their own or they just don't, don't have that much need for an autopilot. Now, if you decide that you do need an autopilot, then decide, do you want the first generation or the second generation? Um, if you buy the car of the first generation, uh, regardless of the software, that will only take you so far with it. There, are, there will be some limitations on the self-driving uh, features. However, if you buy it, I believe 2016, fall of 2016 and later, those cars are equipped with uh, um, everything that you need for autonomous driving and just a matter of the software that will be rolling out uh, for as updates by Tesla for those, for those features. So figure it out if you need it, if so, which version, that actually will make a huge difference. There are many other features also that Tesla has that you need to worry about it. For example, air suspension. If you need it, you might want to find out uh, what is the uh, cost of fixing it when it breaks down and how reliable it is, because I've seen some, some of those cars um, have some issues with air suspension. So go through all of those issues and, and features and, and determine which ones are must have and which ones are you willing to pay for and which ones are not so much. Um, one feature that I will tell you that pretty much everybody uh, uh, got and, and enjoys is a tech package because that one includes the navigation system uh, and, and directions. So that one kind of must have. Number three, and this could be obvious, but a lot of people forget that once you bring it home, you have to charge it every day, every night, really. Um, and a lot of people don't really think about it, but that is a project on itself. You need to have your own charger at home because that's where you're going to charge your car most of the time, if not all the time. And there are different types of chargers. Uh, there are specific Tesla chargers and there are regular electric car chargers that you will have to use an adapter um, in order to charge your Tesla. Now with Tesla uh, chargers, you also need to figure out if you have a dual uh, charger in your car or just single charger, that means that you, you need to figure out what actual wall charger you want to get uh, for that particular car. On top, so by the way, it, it does cost a pretty penny to get the charger and actually almost as much to install it. You will have to hire a, a professional electrician in order to do that work. Um, some people do run regular cables that come with the Tesla from their 240 outlets, but uh, you're probably better off getting a charger. On top of that, you need to figure out if you need to jump on a different plan with your electric company, because your electric company might have a better rate plan uh, for your for those who own electric cars, because you want to charge at night and you want to spend as little money as possible. So those plans for from some of those electric companies uh, do accomplish that, but that's something you need to research on your own and calculate in your cost of owning the Tesla. Number four, figure out what is transferable in your Tesla. There are quite a few things that uh, depending on when you're watching this video and what year and model the car you buy, um, I don't wanna go into specifics because uh, you might be watching this much, much later and policies have changed. But for example, obviously you have your regular warranty and then add-on warranty, extended warranty that people bought. Make sure that those are transferable. The regular warranty definitely is, but with the extended warranty, not always. There is a separate warranty on the motor and the battery. Make sure you understand uh, what the um, warranty on that is because battery and the motor are the most expensive parts of your car. If they break down, you might have to invest much more money into the car that you expected. Um, other things, for example, uh, the free internet. A lot of new, the original uh, uh, models uh, came with a free internet, but later on uh, uh, those expire after a certain time and you might have to actually acquire a monthly bill because the car requires to have internet in order to operate almost all the cool gadgets. Um, and lastly, don't forget that superchargers uh, is, is a big deal, especially if you, if you travel, you need to understand if this car and if it's made before 2016 and has 
uh, the free supercharger for life feature, but anything that you buy of 2016 and, and later, um, you will have to uh, pay for supercharger after a certain point. I, I encourage you to do that research on your own because I'm not sure what's going to happen with those policies, but make sure to pay attention to that because those are a big deal. And lastly, please check out the battery of the car. The battery of any Tesla is the most expensive part of the car. And those are, you know, they, they, there are a lot of things that can go wrong with it. Mainly you want to make sure that the battery has not degraded too much because these batteries, you know, their capacity, much like with your phones, uh, uh, it decreases with time. So you want to make sure what the original, that, that, that the current number uh, of the range that the car has now is not too far off from what it was originally. As a matter of fact, when you get into, into a car that you want to uh, purchase, uh, see if the owner has the charging set to 90% or less, because if he or she has it set to 90% or more, that means they've been charging this battery to extend, which actually degrades uh, the battery a lot. So you kind of want to make sure that the battery has been taken care of because this is something that you're taking over and might end up having to change or fix. Um, of course, just like with any car, I would, uh, I, would, I would encourage you to have it checked out by a mechanic and the battery should be number one thing that you want that mechanic to check out so you understand what the health of the battery is. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, there are a lot of other little things here and there. And if you have any particular questions, please go ahead and post them right here in the comment section. I'll try to uh, circle back and answer them. Or you can join our Facebook group and, and ask uh, um, uh, our community there. We'll be happy to answer. So I hope this helps. I hope you enjoy the car and uh, please come back and uh, let us know how you like it.